Peace, brothers and sisters who have arrived here on this channel. We are still here past the 9th of Av. We are still here past to Be'av, the full moon of the month of the lion. And we were supposed to be very, very sad because of this. However, after everything has passed, we received something that basically closed the deal here. And you will see on this video something that I have been shown that brings me all the way to the time of my own conversion, to the time that I felt the Holy Spirit for the first time and made me think that my whole purpose in life was to make this video here for you tonight. So stick around to watch what an amazing self-fulfilling prophecy that started and is going to end very, very soon. In here, in this cover, you see the beginning of the month of Esther, the month of Esther, which is the month of Virgo. And we call it Esther because we know that in this year that we have been since 2023, it started with a total solar eclipse, a ring of fire eclipse on the finger of the constellation of Virgo. And that was on October 14, 2023. And we consider that to be the wedding ring of the solar eclipse. And after that, we went through an amazing confirmation for the year of Esther, because many things were pointing to Esther. And we were expecting the rapture also to happen on the time of Purim because of that. But we are going to see now the ending of the year of Esther with also an amazing find here that a comet will be going through the constellation of Virgo precisely here in this last month. And it's going to be the brightest comet in the past 15 years. That will be around October 10th, 2024. Before I get to that, if you haven't yet watched my channel, I create content about the end times, about the soon rapture of the church for about two years in English, seven plus years in Portuguese. And I've been doing this a lot. And you can watch the videos here on the playlist English videos. There are many videos for you to watch here, but the most important ones that you need to understand this video thoroughly are those videos here about Esther. So we will see here on the slide very soon. I'll show you, but it is very important for you to catch the signs that we have been seeing to understand where we are right now and how close we are to the rapture of the church. So going back here to the slide, we are in uh, at the end of the month of Av, the month of the lion. And at the beginning to start the month of Elu. Elu is the month of Virgo. And Elu, if you search online, it is the month that is said, my beloved is mine and I'm up from I'm of my beloved. And that is a saying in Songs of Solomon that also portrays the rapture of the church. So it's a very interesting month that we're going to enter. And previously we saw on the last day of Elul 2023 that a wedding ring total solar eclipse of Ring of Fire happened. So on my channel here, I basically created three videos in January. And those are very important for you to understand here. I will just summarize, but I really um, encourage you to watch those because they are still available in this platform. The first one is here, Aster Crown in the Skies. And in this video, basically, I showed you this. I showed you that an asteroid called Aster was crowning the constellation of Virgo exactly from the beginning of the month 
of the 10th month, the month of Tevet in the Bible, which is in the story of Esther, the month that she was crowned. So an asteroid called Esther was crowning the constellation of Virgo precisely on the month that Esther is crowned in the Bible. Most people in the church, most watchmen, were not seeing this because they were one month uh, wrong, one month ahead of the true uh, true calendar, the true calendar that portrays the sun, moon, and stars. Those that are following the Jewish calendar to the date, they are often wrong by a month or even two months. And you see that this is going to happen again next year because they are not following the position of the sun, moon, and stars to dictate when the months are and when the years are and when they begin. But they are following the tradition of the Jews that just calculated based on the account there that they created. And they just follow that because of tradition. So most times, it's very often for them to be one month ahead of the true calendar. And most watchmen miss this because they were one month ahead. So they were thinking that this was happening on the 11th month, but truly this was happening on the 10th month, the month of Tevet, which an asteroid called Esther crowned the constellation of Virgo precisely that in the story of Esther, the moment that she is crowned. So that's what I told you on this first video here. On the second video here, a lot of important information was also presented to you because we saw identical eclipses happening in the time frame of Esther there in 480 before Christ and also in 2024. So I showed you this. So this is the catalog of solar eclipses on the year from the year 500 BC to 399 BC. And we see here, minus 479 equals to 480 BC, because it is uh, considered the year zero. So we have to add one or subtract one. So 480 BC, April 9, and October the second solar eclipses. And in 2024, we see April 8, but it's already at past 6 p.m., so it's the other day, so the same day here, and October the 2nd as well. And then we have here lunar eclipses on March 25th and September 18th of 480 BC, and also in 2024, March 25th and September 18th. So the exact same eclipses happened in the year of the true story of Esther from the Bible, 480 BC, and they are happening also in 2024. So this information is very, very strong. That's something that nobody can fabricate this. It is a confirmation of over 2,500 years to the date exactly. So this is insane. Only now with our technology, we were able to track uh, solar and lunar eclipses back in the day. And now we can see the futures also. And we saw that those are matching precisely from the story of Esther to 2024. So we can clearly see that this is something that is happening here. That's why this year here has been the year of Esther. That's very, very, very important. So the last video, which is one of the most important videos for you to watch, is one hour long, but man, the information here in this video is simply amazing. I will just summarize, but I do really encourage you to watch it there. It is a very important, strong video made in January, so you will see what an amazing information that was presented there, and I'm summarizing here for you now, is that... I showed you this diagram here, basically, that tells you that the six days that God created the world and rested on the seventh day translates into years, because the word for days and years are the same. So 
He created the world in six years and rested on the seventh year. And I showed you that this does make sense because on the sixth year, he created the animals, the land creatures. He created man. Man gave the name to all of the animals that he created in the fifth and the sixth year. And then he created woman and gave it woman to Adam. So even, even though God can do anything in just a couple of seconds if he wants to, man or Adam, Adam, right? He, it is impossible for him in just a period of 24 hours name all of the land creatures in existence plus being pierced to the side recover and see and receive eve on the same 24 hour period that would be impossible for a man made of uh made of earth right to be able to do this that's why one year makes a lot of sense and this i showed you that most likely here he created the land creatures during the first three months. And then on Hanukkah, he created the man. Then man gave names to all creatures here. And by the time there would have been Passover in the future, Adam or Adam was pierced to the side, just like Jesus was pierced. And then he stayed the whole time of the Feast of Weeks in recovery. And only in the month of Elul, in the last month of the year back then, he saw and was presented Eve. And that does make a lot of sense. I highly encourage you to watch the full video here because I explained it much better. I want you to pay attention to this part of the video here that I told you back in January that does make sense that Eve was presented to Adam exactly in the month of Elul, in the last month of the year back then. Because the sun is on Virgo at that time. And that's also the Feast of New Oil. So Hanukkah is a Feast of Oil. And God created Adam there. And the Feast of New Oil, or another oil, right? And that's when Eve was presented to Adam. And we know that the Revelation 12 sign also happens in the month of Elul. Because the sun is being covered by that Virgo is being covered by the sun. So this is the month of Elul and not the month of Tishrei, month of Libra, as most people were thinking back in 2017. So, and we know also that the Revelation 12 sign, the first time that the Revelation 12 sign happened, it happened back in the time of Adam and Eve. So this is an amazing confirmation as well. So it does make sense that Eve was presented to Adam in the month of Elul, in the last month, because after that, then God entered into rest on the seventh year, on the month of Tishrei, and also after that, they stayed, according to the Book of Jubilees, for seven years in the Garden of Eden. So it does make a lot of sense. And I did this to show you guys in January, thinking that Peering was to be the month here for the rapture of the church. I wasn't even thinking about Elul being the possibility for the rapture of the church. Although in Elul 2023, we were also talking about the Revelation 12 sign again because of many asteroids confirmation in the Virgo, which they, they were the United Nations, they were Israel, the asteroid called Child, all the, those asteroids that were very interesting in its names, they were in the constellation of Virgo, also covered by the sun, the moon in, under its feet. So we were thinking about the Revelation 12 sign again in 2023, in the month of Elul. And remember, that's also when the eclipse, the total solar eclipse of Ring of Fire happened in the finger of the Virgin there on October 14. So we were thinking that precisely because of all of this. So this was an amazing information that I presented in January. And now it makes even more sense when we check the month of Elul because we uh, know the Messiah Jesus 
is called also the second Adam. And he is has been following the pattern, the God, the pattern of God precisely to the date, just like the first Adam followed. So we know that Jesus was first here in Passover. And what came out of him? It is blood and water, which is how he purchased his bride. And we are purchased by his blood and water, by his sacrifice, by believing in him, we are his bride. So he was pierced here on Passover, Nisan. And very likely, just like the first Adam received Eve in the last month, it is very likely that we also are presented to the second Adam, or Jesus in this case, in the last month, in the month of Elu, the month of the sun being in the Virgin, which it translates also as the last month of the summer, which is for us a summer harvest still. So many confirmations there, which leads us also to Revelation 12 sign happening in Elu, the past last year's sign with many asteroids also in Elu, and all the way through Genesis, because the first Revelation 12 sign happened in, in the time of Adam and Eve, all, see, almost 6,000 years ago. So, amazing confirmation so far. But let's go to the 14th of October 2023. That's when we see here the sun and the moon being the finger of the Virgin here, close to Spica. And that's the last day of Elul, 2023. The next day here would have been uh, Feast of Trumpets. Starting the year that we are right now, that ends in the Feast of Trumpets. So we saw this, the proposal, let's call it that way, the finger, the wedding ring on the finger of the Virgin in the month of Elu, after seeing the Revelation 12 sign replayed here with asteroid Virgo, asteroid uh, Child, asteroid United Nations, asteroid Israel, all here in the constellation of Virgo. And then we saw here the wedding ring. And after that, it started the next year, the year that we are right now, that ends in the Feast of Trumpets as well. That's when the Jews changes the calendar. That's when we see that we enter the year 5995 in this Feast of Trumpets 2024, and back in 2023, that's when we entered the, the year 5994, which we are right now. So think about this, and now let's go to Stellarium, because I have a lot of things to show you guys there. And this is going to blow your mind. Blow your mind, because it's simply amazing and i have confirmations that leads all the way to my own uh conversion my own time when i received the holy spirit let me just quickly here put stellarium open Okay, now I'm bringing Stellarium here, all right, let's select here the moon, I don't know for some reason Stellarium doesn't work very well. Okay, so now we see Stellarium live here, let me pause. Let me just add a few seconds here. Okay, so what do we see in Stellarium here together? We see that the sun is in Leo, the lion, which is the month of Av, the month of the lion. The moon is getting closer to the sun and they will meet, the moon will disappear, and then the moon will appear its first sliver 
when the sun is leaving the constellation of Lion and entering the constellation of Virgo, that's when we know it will be the month of Elu, the month of Virgin. So let's add here the days and see together the beginning of the month of Elu. So today is the 28th of August, 29, 30, 31 of August, 1 of September, the 2nd of September, we see they meet. The sun and the moon meet on the 2nd of September. On the 3rd of September, the moon is only 1% illuminated. It is not visible yet. On the 4th of September, by the time it gets to the night in Israel, here we see it is visible. So the 5th of September, 4th and 5th of September, it is the first day of the month of Elul. And we see that the moon and Venus, they are making an alignment here in the arm of Virgo, right in the first day of Elul. That's interesting because Venus is known as the morning star, and that's a... Uh, that's a name that we also call Jesus, the morning, the bright morning star. So the moon meeting with Venus here in the beginning of the month of Elul, the month of Virgin, it is already interesting by itself. Shows us that this meeting might happen indeed. So this is the first day. Let's go. Second, third. 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th, 13th, 14th. So by the 14th day of the month of Elu, when the full moon is happening there in the constellation of Pisces, so the full moon always happens in the directly opposed constellation, which is Pisces, we know it is 100% illuminated. That's the full moon. That's the 14th day of a month. And that's also known as Feast of Oil. The Feast of Oil happening there in the full moon of the month of Elul. That's most likely the time frame that Adam received Eve back in the day, all the way from the time of Adam and Eve. And you can perceive the following here. Back here in the right, you will see that there's an asteroid, actually a comet, called C2023A3 Su Chan. This comet here is a comet that as you go through the days, let's just add here quickly. It goes through the constellation of Virgo. So it's a comet that goes through the constellation of Virgo and it's very, very bright, very visible. So it is very interesting because when you research this comet, you will find the following here. So just go here towards. the news. So Tzu Xingxian, you can search here, and here is one of the news. Comet that could be the brightest in the last 15 years approaches Earth. That's the comet that we see that was going to go through the constellation of Virgo. Tzu Qing Shen, it's here. It was discovered at the Purple Mountain Observatory, and its name means Purple Mountain. So the Purple Mountain asteroid crosses the constellation of Virgo and is going to be the brightest 
in the past 15 years. So a comet that will pass close to Earth could shine as bright as Venus. Remember, Venus is the bright morning star and made in a conjunction with the moon right there at the beginning of the month of Elul. Another here. Comet will approach Earth after 80,000 years and may shine brighter than Venus in the sky. After 80,000 years, 80 here is a sign of also of uh, beginning, new beginnings, which is very interesting. Could be the brightest in the last 15 years. So very interesting, this comet here, that as we see together, goes through the constellation of Virgo. All the way there. Now things to point out here, which is very interesting. Here on the, the 18th to the 19th of September, full moon of the month of Elul, Feast of New Oil, we see that the comet begins to be visible. But if we return to the lowest point where it can still be visible, we will return here. So it is just a tiny dot, but still visible here. Here, here it's just a tiny dot, doesn't even show its name here, but you can barely see it right here in the corner. It's moving here. So let me just zoom a little bit more. So the comet's basically starting to be seen in the sky through the use of instruments around the time frame of 19 of August. Let's put it away. It's just a tiny dot in the sky. 19 of August was the time frame of Tu Be'av, the month, the the moment of Valentine's Day for the Bible, right? And we were expecting the rapture of the church as a hope at that moment. But at that moment, what was happening? A comet was approaching Earth here, approaching our vision here in order for us to eventually see it, see its tail, for it to go through the constellation here of Virgo. And then one of the top days that we have to watch here for Elu is the seven year anniversary for the Revelation 12 sign in 2017, which is 23rd and 24th of September. So on 23rd and 24th of September, that's when the Revelation 12 sign in 2017 will be seven years old. And that's precisely the date, the 23rd and 24th of September, the date that the UN chose to create something that they are calling the Pact for the Future. The Pact for the Future to fulfill Agenda 2030 of the UN. So counting 2024 gives us still seven years to fulfill this agenda. And they chose the date of 23rd and 24th of September to be the date to sign this covenant, this pact for the future. Precisely the date that the comet will be already visible in the sky and about to cross here the constellation of Virgo. Now, something that no other channel will tell you this, and it's something amazing, and it will lead for you to see all the way back into the moment that I was called, that I was uh, caught by God and felt His Holy Spirit. If you stop to realize here, we go through the days here, so we see the moon coming back here, and then by... By the 4th here of October, it's already another new moon. So another month is starting here on the 4th of October 2024. 
most people and most watchmen and even I myself before this understanding here, before studying this, I would have called this Feast of Trumpets because it is another month after the month of Elul. It could only be the month of Libra, right? But clearly the sun is not in the month of Libra yet. So the, month, the sun is still in the constellation of Virgo. And another month is beginning. So what month is this? Well, here it comes. This is the second month of a loop. So from time to time, we have to add a 13th month because the moon is faster than the sun and we have to add this month to fix this let's put it away let's put the, the word fix there to fix the calendars there or to follow what the sun is telling us which month it is and the jews only do this in the month of adar so they call adar one and adar two and it's the constellation of pisces because that's also a moment that the sun stays two months here in the constellation of pisces and when this happens here in the constellation of Pisces, that's a long winter. So two months here in the constellation of Pisces, Adar 1 and Adar 2, that's a long winter. The Jews did this, if I'm not mistaken, this year. So they added uh, a second Adar in March in order to be in the correct calendar. That's why since Passover there, since Nisan, we and the Jews were in the correct calendar. They added another month to fix their missing month that the sun was uh, pointing, but they were uh, they were behind for a lot. So they added another month here in the month of Adar. However, the sun is telling us that it is not staying two months in the constellation of Pisces. It is actually staying two months in the constellation of Elu. The constellation of Virgo, and that's when a, a long summer happens. So we are within a long summer because the sun is still here in the constellation of the sun. So if you, you add another month here, so let's add one month and go to November, and you will see that by the 3rd of November, another new moon, then the sun clearly is going towards the constellation of Libra. That's the month of Libra. That's how we can perceive it is truly the Feast of Trumpets or the month of Tishrei, the seventh month, or and the seventh month for us, but back in the day it was the first month. So we can clearly see that the sun is now entering Libra in November and the moon here entering Scorpio. And that's truly on 3rd of November, the Feast of Trump is the feast of the beginning of the world, right? And also the true month of Tishrei. However, no other channel in no other place in the world, I couldn't even find this information on the internet, would add another month on the month of Elul, despite of being obvious, despite of the sun choosing to stay there in the constellation of Virgo two months, despite the sun clearly entering constellation of Libra the, on the following month, nobody will tell you this. This is the only channel in the whole world, as, uh, as far as I'm concerned, as far as I know, that is telling you this, that we're going to be two months in the constellation of Elu. There will be Elu 1, which starts in September, and then Elu 2, which starts in October. And here in November, that's truly the Feast of Trumpets, but most watchmen that you probably watch, and I also watch, they were going to be missing this, and they're going to be behind for the whole next year. So take a look at this, because this is purely correct. So here on, the sun is in clearly in Libra, and the moon here entering Scorpio, Feast of Trumpets. If we add one month and go to December, we see here the new moon visible, the sun is in Scorpio, and the moon here in Sagittarius. They are going to call this the month of Sagittarius. So the Jews and most watchmen that you watch, and I also watch, 
they are going to call this the month of Sagittarius, but clearly the sun is still in Scorpio. Let's add another month here. Let's subtract a couple days. New moon here, visible. New moon visible here on the 1st of uh, January. Clearly the sun is in Sagittarius and the moon here, the new moon in Capricornius. This is to be the month of Sagittarius. So uh, the month of Scorpio is Heshvan, the month of Sagittarius is Kislev. However, the Jews will call this the month of Capricornius, the month of Tevet, the 10th month. And watch the watchmen that we watch, they will also call this the 10th month. But clearly the sun is not there yet. It is clearly in the constellation of Sagittarius. Let's keep on adding another month. And subtract day here. We see that on the 31st of January, another new moon, and clearly the sun is on Capricornius. So this is the month of Tevet. They will call this the month of Shabbat, the 11th month. Now one more here, and you will see how crazy this becomes. Here we will see that the sun is still in Aquarius on the 1st of March, not at all close to the constellation of Pisces. Yet, this new moon here, the Jews and the Watchmen will call this the month of Adar. But clearly, this is the month of Shabbat, the 11th month. Now, take a look at this, guys. On April, actually here, in the 30th of March, the 30th of March, clearly, very clearly, the sun is still in the constellation of Pisces. Yet, the Jews will call this the new year, the month of Aries, the month of Nisan. Do you call this the new year? Let's just add another day here. Do you call this the new year? I truly don't. This is not a new year. The new year starts when the sun is in Aries, the first constellation, the first house, the first month. So we clearly see that because we are adding another month here in the month of Elul, the month, the month that the sun truly stays in the constellation of Virgo for two months, they are going to be one month ahead again, and they will keep being ahead for the whole another year. Truly here, the month of Aries, the first month of the year, the month of Nisan for the next year will be on the 29th of April. Clearly here you see the sun is on Aries, the new moon sighted in constellation of Taurus. That's the month of Aries. That's the month of the Lamb. That's the first month. And most watchmen, if not all of them, and the Jews, even the, the church, the Catholic church, they will all be true Passover. So they will call Passover. For them, Passover will be on the 12th of April. But the sun isn't even close to the constellation here of Aries. It's not even passed through the second fish here. So this is not Passover, guys. It's not Passover. True Passover will be here on May. The 12th of May here. The last bit of the constellation of Aries to go through the constellation of Taurus. So the 12th of May 2025. That's true Passover. They will be one month wrong because they are not following the sun, moon, and stars, the position of the sun, moon, and stars. And because we are, because we are seeing here that the sun really, truly stays here in the month of Virgo, in the, the constellation of Virgo for two months, we are able to truly assess this, truly tell you what God is trying to tell you through the skies. Nobody can mess with the skies. So we see the sun staying in the constellation of Virgo for two months. That's a long summer. And September and October will be Elu 1 and Elu 2. And that's a new information that only this channel could tell you. No other channel will tell you this. And most channel will tell that this is wrong because they will give their their Justifications, however, you can clearly see here in Solarium that the Sun is going to be in the constellation of Virgo for two months. 
Now, watch this because this is going to be the best part here. Remember the asteroids that in 2023, here, 2023, we were seeing here a replay of the Revelation 12 sign. Yeah, we were seeing a replay of the Revelation 12 sign here around September 19. The, um, the moon under the hits, uh, her feet, the sun covering her, and then we saw asteroids. Remember, asteroid Israel around here, asteroid United Nations around here, asteroid child right here. So this was very strong back in 2023, in September, because we were seeing a replay of the Revelation 12 sign in a way, with many asteroids and its interesting names to it. And it was not Fist of Trumpets. They were calling this Fist of Trumpets. But you know that this is clearly the month of Virgo, the month of Elu. This was happening in the month of Elu. We even see here a comet here called Nishimura, which is interesting as well. So we were all talking about that. And that's very interesting, okay? But... But in January 2024, we, I told you earlier here in this video that there were this asteroid called Esther here, perfectly in the month of Tevet, crowning the constellation of Virgo, remember? So the asteroid called Esther crowned here the constellation of Virgo right here in January 11 starting precisely the month of the vet there so very interesting now let's go to the 23rd or 24th of september and see where are those asteroids right where are those asteroids going to be precisely on the anniversary of seven years from the true revelation 12 sign in 2017 Let's see where are them. The first one that I want you to see is Esther. Wow, the asteroid called Esther is within the Virgin. But not only this, this asteroid has been in the Virgin for the whole month of Elu, even before a little bit. So even in the month of Av here, that we were expecting the rapture in August, the asteroid enter the constellation of Virgo and remains here for about three months. It stays in August, it stays in September, it stays in October, and only leaves here in November, which is very interesting. So, another confirmation here, guys. The asteroid Esther is within the Virgin, precisely here in the month of the Loom. But not only that, we see that they match with the comet. So, you can see here that the comet is looking towards the Esther asteroid here, precisely on the 11th of October 2024. The, uh, the comet Purple Mine Mountain is looking at the asteroid called Esther within the constellation of Virgo. What an amazing sight to see. How can we fake this? How can the world see this? But this is something amazing. So there is an asteroid that somebody called this asteroid called Esther. This asteroid crowned the Virgin precisely when Esther is crowned in the month of Tevet. And now this asteroid goes back to the Virgin precisely when a comet, the brightest comet in 15 years, goes through the Virgin and they meet in the Virgin right there in the month of Elum. Amazing. This is just amazing. But going back here, to the date 
of the anniversary, seven years anniversary of the Revelation 12 sign in 23rd and 24th of September, where are the other asteroids? So the asteroid child is right there in the eagle. So the child is caught in the eagle there behind a shield. So the asteroid child is behind the shield under the wings of the eagle. Amazing here. We know that this moment here, the 23rd and 24th of September, is when the UN will be making a pact for the future. They will be signing a covenant with many. Where is the asteroid called United Nations? Well, could you see here? The asteroid in the United Nations is precisely in the sting of the scorpion. Come on, nobody can take this. This is just amazing. On the moment that they will be signing the pact for the future on the anniversary of seven years of the Revelation 12 sign, the asteroid that they call United Nations is going to be precisely in the sting of Scorpius. So the venom comes from that. And that's when the Revelation 12 sign will be making seven years. That's when they will be signing a deal. Amazing, amazing confirmation. And when is, where is the, the, the asteroid called Israel? Well, Israel is there at the horn of the goat, Capricorn. Is. So he is within the beast that comes out of the water, which is, look, it looks like a goat, but comes out of the water. So Israel is there expecting the beast that comes out of the water, which is the Antichrist. So, wow, what an amazing, perfect setup this is, also with the asteroids. So the child is under the wings of eagle. The United Nations is going to be there at the sting of Scorpio. Israel is going to be at the beast that comes out of the water, and Aster is precisely in the constellation of Virgo. This is amazing, guys. Amazing, amazing, amazing. But this doesn't end here. Because of something amazing. Something really, really, truly amazing. So, let me just check here. All right, okay. So, remember that I was always talking about this 23rd and 24th of September as being very important because date calculator. Because of this, when we go to the 9th of Av, 14th of August, 2024, if we add 40 days, and I was always telling you guys this, 40 is the minimum requirement for the, the chaos of the rapture to persist, because it's going to be a change in the ages, and the change in the ages comes with this 40 days of trial, 40 days of judgment, 40 days of testing, 40 days Jesus stayed in the desert. 40 years, the Jews walked in the desert. 40 days and 40 nights, that's when the deluge happened. So 40 is a must here. There must be at least 40 days of chaos after the rapture of the church. And if we add 40 days to the 9th of Av, the 8th and 9th of Av there, we see the 23rd of September, 2024. So for me, the rapture of the church has had to happen at the 8th and 9th of Av, the Feast of the New Wine, because it leads 40 days from the um, from the Revelation 12 sign seven years and from the Pact of the Future. So I was clearly thinking of this. I even showed you guys here all my videos constantly. Let me just try to so I was showing you guys here. Where is it? Where is it? Q 
curated by Pentecost. So latest that the rapture could happen. This is uh, the previous, the two previous videos on my channel. I was talking about the 12th through the 14th of August, Feast of New Wine, Antichrist revealed. It has to be the latest that the rapture can happen because it is perfectly 40 days to the UN seven years pact. And this has got to be the pact of the Antichrist, the seven years covenant, which truly does look like it. And because we passed it, I was like, wow, so the dream is over, right? The dream is over because where are you going to put this 40 days? There must be 40 days. All right, all right. So let's look at this because it's amazing. <laughs> so as you can see here, this is the month of Elul. Clearly, everybody will talk about this. But this on the October the 4th, that's a new month month and that's again the second month of a loop the 4th of October there is going to be we're only going to change the calendar the true year or the, or the new year the, the new Hebrew year is only going to be changed to 5995 when on the feast the true feast of trumpets that's going to be truly on the 3rd of November the 3rd of November. So I thought to myself, well, if this is going to be the truly change of the calendars, that's when we're going to enter the 5995. That's when there will be less than seven years for the rapture, for the, the, the tribulation to happen. Let's just simply subtract 40 days, right? From November the 3rd. And guess what? November the 3rd, 2024, takes 40 days away. That's precisely the 24th of September, which is the date of the Pact of the Future, which is the date for the seven years Revelation 12 sign anniversary. And it gets us perfectly there. So, do you guys realize how awesome this is? We're seeing truly a possibility of the rapture happening around the time frame of the Pact for the Future, seven years anniversary of the Revelation 12 sign in the month of the Virgin, the month of Elul which is also a few days after the full moon, which is a feast of new oil. And this is simply amazing because 40 days from this date leads us towards the true feast of trumpets, which will change the calendars to 5995. And then we will see the tribulation playing out. So the, the true Antichrist will just confirm this covenant that they tried to confirm, but the rapture happened. He will try to, he will just confirm this covenant that was presented in the time frame that the rapture happens. When they try to sign this deal, that's when the rapture happens. And then 40 days of chaos later, that's when the Antichrist comes in the true Feast of Trumpets around the November the 3rd and confirm this covenant for seven years. And that's just perfect. Especially because we know on the 5th of November, that's the US elections. And if I'm not mistaken, the UN meeting will be also in November after this. So a lot of confirmations we see through this. A lot of confirmations we see through this. And there's even more confirmations that now goes to personal confirmations to me since the time that I was uh, I received the Holy Spirit. So if you look at this here, You will see that on 2023, we saw that on the 14, the 14 day, of The 14th day of October 2023, that's the total solar eclipse in the ring of fire in, in the hand here, in the finger of the Virgin. The last day of Elul, 
of last year to begin this year that we are now, which is the year of Esther. Remember, many things happened towards Esther, and we are seeing the, the, the eclipses being the eclipses of Esther. And now, in 2024, take a look at this. The last eclipse of Esther is going to happen on October the 2nd. And it is a total solar eclipse, also Ring of Fire, happening here in the constellation of Virgo. In the last day of the first month of Elul, when the comet is approaching here, this is going closer to the constellation of, of Virgo, but also Mercury is here. Mercury, the messenger, is here, looking at this total solar eclipse, also happening here in Virgin. That's the last eclipse of Esther. And, okay, we cannot fake this. This is something amazing. Let me just, where is it? Where is it? The Aster Eclipse. Oh, here is it. So here in this video, I showed you oh, in this video here uh, that I told you in the beginning of this video, the eclipses. Well, on the 480 BC, the October 2nd eclipse was called Xerxes Eclipse because that's... Uh, the eclipse that happened around there in Persia. So the last eclipse of that year, the year of Aster in 480 BC, happened in October the 2nd, and that's called Xerxes Eclipse. And that's an eclipse also happening in Virgo in 2024, the 2nd of October, in the Virgin. Xerxes Eclipse happening here, as a comet called Purple Mountain is approaching the Virgin. And it's amazing, guys. Amazing. So this is the eclipse that is ending the first month of Elul, but the sun is still remaining one more month in the constellation of the Virgin to be Elul to a long summer. Summer harvest, right? And this is amazing because going back here to 2023, when we saw the alignment of the Revelation 12 sign there that led us to seeing all of the asteroids here was on the 19th of September 2023. And back in 2022, guys, I wrote a left behind letter to my family. And this is something that I encourage you guys to write. Write a letter a left behind letter for your family that will be left behind and they can read after the rapture has happened. And the letter that I wrote, of course, in Portuguese, because my family speaks Portuguese, I briefly explain the moment that I was visited by God, the moment that I received the Holy Spirit. And take a look at this. I wrote this in 2022. So I had been an atheist before this, and I was visited by God, and I felt his presence on the day of 19 of September 2013. And that day I felt a, a strong presence. The sun was yellow. I took a picture of the sun here. I was in the United States back in this day. He had two rainbows in the sky, and as soon as I looked at the rainbows, I started to cry in the middle of the street. And I start to see that things, that things were more beautiful than they were previously. They were more alive. I went crying to my apartment, and then I sent a message to my mother, saying that I had felt the presence of God. So, the 19th of September 2013, that's when I was visited by God. That's when I, I felt His presence. And this is a picture that I took on that day. The sky was yellow, and there had two rainbows in the sky. So this is a letter I wrote to my family here. And I remember writing, uh, writing this, and I remember searching for this correct date here, because I have the picture. 19th of September 2013. Now, when I wrote this letter, I didn't have this information, the, the understanding that I do have today 
about the sun, moon, and stars being the 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 correct date, the correct month date. So, 19 of September 2013, we see here the following: the sun is in the Virgin, covering the Virgin, and the moon is full in the constellation of Pisces. This the Jews, they were one month ahead. Of course, they are always one month ahead. The Jews call this Tabernacles, the Feast of Tabernacles for the Jews. But as we can see here, clearly this is the month of Elul, full moon of the month of Elul, which is Feast of New Oil. Feast of New Oil. So I received the Holy Spirit here. His presence I felt in the Feast of New Oil there, the Jews call the Tabernacles, in 2013. And going to 2024, we see that 2024, on the 19th of September, is also here the full moon, basically. So the 18th to the 19th here is the full moon, also Feast of New Oil in 2024. And that's when we see here the comet coming towards the constellation of Virgin. But the most interesting thing about this, because it's already very interesting to see all of this playing out. Imagine you being me here and remembering writing this, remembering receiving the Holy Spirit all the way back in 2013, seeing the dates match, seeing the dates match to this year and receiving this information. Only I could tell you guys that there are two months in the, in the constellation of Virgo this, this year, Elu 1 and Elu 2. No other people will confirm this to you. Now... <laughs> comes the best. The After I received there the Holy Spirit, I felt it. I started to look into it. I started to... We all go through this uh, beginning phase, right? And I remember that the first movie that I watched in theaters after this... After this... Uh, experience here in the 19th of September 2013 was a movie that was released on October 11 <laughs> and the movie is called Escape Plan all right I'm not faking this out okay I remember clearly because Sylvester Stallone and Arnold Schwarzenegger they they made this movie it was released in October 11 2013 in Portuguese, it is Escape Route. Escape Route, the name in Portuguese. But I watched in in I watched this movie in the United States. I was living there. I was doing college in South Dakota, and I remember watching this in the theaters. And I I remember that I couldn't properly understand the movie very well because Sylvester Stallone has a muffled voice, and for me, it was very hard to understand his lines. And I remember leaving the theater with many, many uh, lines there being missing for me. So I, I couldn't properly understand the movie. That's why I remember so well. I watched the movie and I remember not understanding the movie because of his voice. And the, the title is Escape Plan. In Portuguese, Escape Route. And in the movie, basically, they are trying to escape with this master plan. Uh heavy super strong security prison which could be uh, seen as the earth right so they are trying to escape this why why does this matter first the 11 october of 2013 is very interesting because if you remember the 11 of october is when the comet will here be here in the virgin meeting the asteroid Aster here, looking at Aster, the asteroid Aster, the comet will be meeting here in the constellation of Virgo, of the Virgo which is very interesting. This is the exact exact date of that happening, right? So that's interesting. But even more so is that recently, on the 25th of August, 2024. This movie uh, passed on the TV for some random reason. I was watching TV there with my family there in the, in the movie channels. 
And this movie started to play out. And I remember that I couldn't properly understand this in the first time that I watched it, all the way back in 2013. And it would be dubbed in my own language, in Portuguese. And then I chose to watch again. And then I could properly understand the whole movie because he, the Sylvester Stallone dubbed the voice. It's much better to be uh, understood for me. And I watched it again on the 25th of uh, August here. So a couple, three days ago. I watched this movie called uh, Escape Route in Portuguese. And if you watch this movie, you will see something amazing. They were only able to escape this prison, this highly security prison. They were only able to do so because they used a tool called Textant. <laughs> so they used this tool to see where they were on Earth. And this tool is called Sextant. And this is precisely the constellation called Sexton, which this comet called Purple Mountain that will cross the Virgin is coming from. So this comet is leaving from the constellation of Sexton. And when I saw this, I was amazed to see this confirmation all the way back to my own conversion, my own first experience with the Holy Spirit. And the first movie that I watched after that experience. And precisely the constellation of Sextant. They used this tool to escape with their escape plan. And that's precisely the constellation where this comet, which will cross the Virgin, Meet the Astor Aster in the Virgin is coming from. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Simply amazing. I was stunned by this. It's simply too much for just one person to handle here. So, wow, I, I'm very, very stunned. I, I felt like all of this information here that I'm presenting to you guys is basically basically all my life since my conversion has been prepared for this moment in time for me to do this video for you guys to perceive what an amazing confirmation we have that makes a lot of sense for the escape plan of the rapture happening here precisely in this month of Elul, the last month of Esther, with high confirmations since my own conversion time frame. And a movie that I watched that used this, and the comment is coming from this. So it is simply amazing here. Amazing. Simply amazing. When I saw this and I watched the movie here, the movie, I, I never watched TV. It's very hard for me to watch TV. It's very rare for me to watch. I just do it when I have nothing else better to do, when I have to stay with the kids as well, and we are there in the living room. We put the movie to be there and talk. Usually we don't watch unless we really want to watch a movie. And we were just going to the channels on the TV, and then this movie comes out. I just choose to watch it again because I remember watching the first time and not understanding because of his voice. And then everything hits. So they leave this high security prison with a sextant. And that's the escape plan. And also, if I'm not mistaken here, the Sylvester Arnold Schwarzenegger, his, his role there is as a hacker that was also in the same prison. And around that time frame, Pavel Durov, the, the founder of Telegram, was arrested there in France as well so many many confirmations to this around the time frame that i watched this video as well so amazing confirmations that leads us to where we are right now a high possibility of the rapture up to the date of september 24th there which is precisely 40 days from the true feast of trumpets the true change in the calendars changing the year of the calendars and the date for the Pact for the Future, also the date for the seven-year anniversary of Revelation 12 sign. Adam, 
probably received Eve in the month of Elul and the month and the feast of New Oil. We are seeing the feast of New Oil here a little a, a little a couple days earlier than this anniversary, this pact for the future, and it always it leads us to 40 days to the two feast of trumpets, and it's the month of Elul, the month of the Virgin, the last month of the summer, and we have the brightest comet in 15 years. We have Circe's eclipse on October the 2nd. We have the meeting there in October 11. And all of this is happening here at this time frame. So we have a high watch time frame for us to be raptured out of here around September 23rd or 24th or even earlier how, how about September 19th or even earlier because uh, Dr. Berriol said that Moses went up the mountain we know the comment here is purple mountain so Moses went up the mountain on the first day of Elul and the first day of Elul will be September the 5th or the first day of the second Elul will be October the 4th. And that's also a possibility for us. So either September the, 4th, the 5th, October the 4th, we have here a nice window for us to be out of here. And this is a master escape plan that we are watching, right? We're watching here because truly it is an amazing sight to see everything converging to this point in time making alignment even to the movie that i watched after my first experience there in the feast of new oil also in 2013. amazing amazing confirmation we have the comet the brighter comet will be as bright as venus venus is the morning star the 5th of september is starting the month of elu with the conjunction with venus so we have a lot to go here. And also we have here uh, Israel not accepting here. Oh, another here. Interesting thing that I, I showed here in the, the Israel 365 News. Scientists expect the star of Jacob to appear this month or this coming month here. And Scientists predict that a nova in the star system called T. Coronae Borealis will be visible to people on Earth in the next month, the month of September. It will appear 1,500 times brighter than the usual. So the 15 is here as well. 15, the 15 is here as well. Very interesting. So 1,500 times brighter than the usual making it the 50th brighter star in the night sky. This nova just be, uh, may just be the star of Jacob, Balaam described as presaging the appearance of the Messiah. Take a look at what the Jews are talking about. So this was released in today, August 28th, here on Israel 365 News. So they are talking about just Gentile prophet the star of Jacob we were talking about this here we know that probably one of the oldest prophecies and traditions about the Messiah comes from Balaam, a Gentile prophet who came to curse Israel but couldn't curse them instead he gives a prophecy that actually says I will tell you what it will happen at the end of days and they are calling this Nova in the month of September, I, I couldn't find this, but you could probably search this out. Who knows what day is going to be? And it's going to be 1500 times brighter than usual. They are calling this the star of Jacob. A sight to see. And also, what else here I have? Also, six planets are aligning here it's 
Six planets will align in Inspectable that will not be repeated for the next 10 years. And a planetary alignment will bring together Mercury, Mars, Jupiter, Uranus, Neptune, and Saturn, providing a unique sight to see in the night sky that will not be repeated for a decade. On August 28th, so today again, the sky will present us with a rare spectacle. Six planets will align in a unique astronomical event. This planetary alignment will be the last of the year and will mark the 2024 calendar as an unmissable date for anyone who appreciates the wonder of the universe. So this is happening today, an alignment that won't be seen for the next 10 years. This was released today. They are expecting on September the Star of Jacob on a, a presaging for the appearance of the, their Messiah. And we're seeing the comet brighter than than 15 years approach the constellation of Virgo in the month of Elul, in, in the constellation of Virgo with the asteroid called Aster, which was already very interesting here. So there are many confirmations here for us to be excited about. And even the 40 days that I was considering major of major importance, it is also repeating here to the true feast of new uh, trumpets of the new year, the, November the 3rd. So we have it all here perfectly aligned to be a high possibility for the rapture of the church. And just to finish this video, I have some updates. I know I haven't been showing the, their photos lately, but here's a little bit of a photo of the two growing up here, the little girl and the little boy. The little girl is almost five months old and the little boy one, one year and six months old. And here's the little video of them here. So they are growing up <laughs> very nicely. <laughs> and here they are. <laughs> so that's them. And in the 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 letter that I left for my family, the left behind letter, I explained that this the this was a miracle that confirmed the rapture for us. So a miracle, a, bi a biblical miracle that confirmed the rapture to us because my wife couldn't have uh, had a child. She was barren. I think that's the word in English. But after praying and if praying to God, asking that if the rapture was to happen, that she could, that she would be pregnant. And then she became pregnant. And now we have two kids. And this was written in 2022. We didn't even uh, saw the second child, but we were talking about in the plural, two childs there. So if you want to see your uh, granddaughters, grandsons, don't put the mark of the beast here. So I wrote this in 2022, already thinking there were to be two childs, and my wife, they couldn't have child before after we prayed to confirm the rapture. She became pregnant, and that's the miracle, and that's the letter behind letter that I wrote for my family here. Write your own letters because it's very important for you to explain your own situation to those that were left behind that knew you, okay? So that's it. I'm very, very hopeful for this coming September, possibly, perhaps the 5th of September will be the rapture, perhaps there on the 19th, the Feast of New Oil, which is probably when Adam received Eve. That's probably the second Adam will receive the bride, the church, could be. Could also be on the 23rd or 24th of September, which is the Pact for the Future, Revelation 12 sign seven years. Or it could be in October, around the brightest comet in 15 years, matching there in the constellation of, of Virgo. On the 4th of October, the first day of Elul, the second Elul. It could be on the 10th or 11th of October. There are many possibilities for us, September and October, and I'm very excited for it because it brings me all the way back to the first time that I received the Holy Spirit. It brings me all the way back to the first movie that I watched, and this comment is coming from the sextant that the movie used to escape the high security prison. So, amazing confirmations for me. I really hope that this is an amazing confirmation for you guys too. I really, really excited about this. I was sad before because we passed the dates, 
and it's okay to be frustrated. We always feel that way after all of the the going through the, the possibilities, right? But after receiving this, I felt like my whole life and my whole conversion is set for this specific video that I'm doing for you guys tonight. So maybe the purpose of my life has been showing you guys this, and I'm very glad if it is, because we are very close to the rapture, and perhaps this is it. The escape route is it, and it's happening because we knew how to see the sun, moon, and stars as the calendar of God, and to see the confirmations that leads to it. Amen. Maranatha, I hope that we see each other very soon in the kingdom of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ. I hope that we are going to all meet there very, very soon, maybe in September or the latest by October. And I hope to be uh, with you very soon. I hope that you are blessed by this video. I hope that you guys felt the Holy Spirit throughout this video as well, because it's simply amazing. Amen. May you be blessed, and may we meet each other very, very soon. Maranatha.